The world is changing fast. Technology is radically reshaping some of our oldest and most traditional workplaces. It's also creating brand new industries. Thanks to digital technology, small, creative businesses offer exciting job opportunities. When you're planning your future, don't be afraid to check out those careers which didn't even exist a few years ago. This short series of films shows you some of the skills our economy will need in the years ahead. From the smallest to the largest, businesses are embracing change. E&I Engineering employs almost 500 people. From its headquarters in Burnfoot, it exports to prestigious clients in Britain and far beyond. We manufacture uh, electrical switchgear, medium voltage and low voltage switchgear and buzz bar trunking. Uh, this type of product is used to power a lot of internet data centres, a lot of large commercial buildings and, and even projects like sports stadia. Uh, we did Wembley Stadium, we did the Aviva in Dublin, we're doing Twickenham now. Uh, we did Terminal 5 at Heathrow, so anywhere where you need large amounts of electrical power, that's where our, our equipment goes. On our shelf floor, there would be basically a range of unskilled, semi-skilled and, and very skilled em uh, employees. Uh, and then in, in our design office, there would be largely graduate electrical engineers and mechanical engineers with university degrees. Um, on, on the shop floor, those people have come through a vocational route. Uh, they've maybe done some GCSEs and then done an apprenticeship. There's examples of uh, uh, people who've started off in, in fairly unskilled work, and you know they've learned within the company, and then they become you know much more senior in the company. Like you know, my number two, uh, my production director, started off as an apprentice, and is a is a director and shareholder in the company now. And that kind of progression isn't unusual at E&I. For workers with the right skills and the right attitude, there's no limit to what they can achieve. I left Thornhill at 16 um, to start an apprenticeship in e and Engineering. Uh, through the apprenticeship I was able to do my ONC and HNC at the regional college and at the moment I'm currently studying to do a degree through the Open University, which e and are funding as well. Some high profile projects that I've worked on in the past is the aquatic centre in, for the London Olympics. So I've been there and was able to see that at the early stages of the build. I've also been working on a data centre in Sweden for Facebook. So I've had the opportunity to go there as well and, and see Sweden. Electrical engineering is a fiercely competitive business. Rivals in other countries can manufacture products more cheaply. E&I has the edge when it comes to skill. Being totally selfish, what we want is certainly maths and physics. Uh, you know, the science type subjects are absolutely invaluable to us. I think kids sometimes have to make a decision. Maybe they're better doing the more difficult subjects, the more marketable subjects, uh, than maybe taking an easy choice. You know, so that's not, I, I don't want to be seen to be saying there's anything wrong with other subjects, but for, for manufacturing tech companies, we're looking for STEM subjects, and that's just the reality of it. For a long time, shop floors like this were men only. Women like Rina are changing that. There's no reason why women can't go into engineering and they should go into engineering. Um, look at me, I've done it and it's, it's a great job. I enjoy it. And we need more women in engineering, so it's something they should think about as a career move. The smartest career move now is to acquire the skills that employers will need in the future. Given how technology is developing, people with a STEM background will be much in demand. Look at where the jobs are, are coming over the next 10 years. They're in renewable technology, they're in IT, they're in manufacturing. And then look at what skills, what qualifications you need to actually focus on to get jobs in these growing industries. Take our company for example. Our company, even in this midst of economic turmoil, our company has doubled in, in, in our employee numbers over the last five years in this very difficult time. So there are jobs for skilled people in, in, in manufacturing and engineering companies. While E&I Engineering is a big noise, literally and metaphorically, other, much smaller companies are making their mark in a more understated way. This office, in the shadow of the Northwest Regional College, is home to two businesses whose founders decided to follow their passions for graphic novels and games development. Well, Troll Inc. was founded um, kind of right out of uh, university. 
Um, myself and Gavin McLaughlin, we had been in a game development course together and uh, we set up Troll Inc as a kind of way of, there wasn't really any game development companies in the area, um, so there wasn't really any jobs, so we thought we'd make our own jobs and actually do what we want to do is develop games. But to uh, you know, generate income and everything else, it's quite difficult. Games aren't uh, necessarily a reliant source of income. So we also do a lot of things where we develop apps for other people and uh, you know, like provide services to schools and other bodies as well. Across the room, other creative types are plugging a gap in a different market. It all started when uh, Kevin Logue, the managing director, he, me and him, used to sit and talk about our own stories. And I started writing them, he started drawing them. And then it sort of took off from there, but that was just for a comic, and it's became a whole spectrum of things. Yeah, comics, people sell them cheap, they buy them cheap. There's not a lot of market, per se, you know, in Ireland, maybe. So services have really sort of been the driving force behind Uproar, doing brochures and posters and product design and stuff, as I was saying about the 3D models and stuff. With an average age around 24, this may be the coolest office in the Northwest. But these are serious businesses requiring talented people. There's two main areas in game development. Uh, one is programming, so it's a lot of engineering, so uh, basically, you know, very strong in the computing fields and everything. And then there's also artists, so that's people who are quite creative in terms of uh, Photoshop skills, or even 3D modeling. So there's a good kind of broad spectrum. There's also um, sound engineers and musicians. So there's a kind of like a, quite, a, quite a wide kind of variety that can actually be in game development. If you don't enjoy game development, you shouldn't really be in it. Uh, you, you kind of have to have a passion for it. You know, like it's quite different from traditional programming and everything because it, as Danny mentioned with his, his business, it's quite uh, varied. There's a lot of different things you have to do. Um, and it could be a completely different thing from one day to the next day. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot to learn. It's kind of a lot, probably more fast paced than a lot of other kind of engineering or creative industries. It sounds like fun. And certainly this hub of creativity allows people who've studied STEM subjects to get in touch with their artistic side. STEM subjects and everything, they can seem quite uh, restrictive to most people. They seem quite uh, regimented, but with you know, businesses like ours, that isn't really the case. People might overlook certain things like engineering or anything. Not really, not a lot of that can probably, you know, apply to stuff that's a little bit more creative than necessarily working in a cubicle, which is fine, but it's not, doesn't suit everyone. Um, so there's like a lot of STEM subjects out there that could, you know, that could be shown to be, that they have a creative kind of side to them. That's definitely the case just a few desks away where Uproar Comics is in full swing. We use the word visual literacy because kids look at pictures and learn more as opposed from a, the same amount of area of text. We call it walls of text. We try and break that and make it more exciting. There's a lot of different sort of services that we've you know, tapped on there as opposed to just sort of doing comics. But in the heart, it's always telling a story. That's what we like. That's what we've always wanted to do. We would use 3D modelers and as you say, coders and stuff like that there, but that's for our app and digital side. But we do have a lot of traditional artists and writers and stuff like that there on board. And it's just, there are sort of too many sort of aspects. They sort of nail down one. We need a lot of versatile people. Working on comics isn't like most traditional jobs, but then for the people at Uproar, that's how they like it. I used to work at a few jobs that I didn't like. Didn't want to get up in the morning, didn't want to go on. And now it's skipping, jumping, you know, sort of thing. It's great. I was involved in mechanical and engineering servicing, which is sort of coming from an architect, you get the building and you would plan where all the pipes, electrics, you know, everything that's in the shell of the house. And I was doing that for two years and I was working on the bookies and I hated them all. So it was like, ah, I've had enough of this. Let's do my own thing for a while. Has it been rewarding? It's not that it has ever been more rewarding. The more skills you have, and the better your qualifications, the more likely you are to wind up doing something you enjoy. 
The LOX Agency as a cross-border body is charged uh, with uh, conserving, protecting and improving the salmon and inland fisheries of the Foyle and Carlingford areas. So uh, our headquarters is in Derry here. Uh, we also have a responsibility for promoting the development of marine tourism and for the development and licensing of aquaculture. From my perspective, uh, I'm a, a fisheries biologist, so a lot of my work will revolve around conducting surveys and uh, designing those surveys to monitor fish species of different types and different ages and identifying those and linking it back uh, to the habitat and trying to improve that habitat and protect the environments. That's the task facing the LOX Agency and it's challenging work demanding a variety of skills. Like any organisation, a broad range of skills uh, are essential to fulfil a variety of work functions but in a general, general way your, your academic qualifications uh, would include GCSEs, particularly English, maths, and uh, if you're working on the scientific side of things, you definitely need science. Uh, if you're looking to get a career into the uh, science side of things, you may need to have A-levels, possibly a degree, uh, but for administrative functions and other uh, jobs in different directorates, there will be a variety of entry levels, uh, which could be from school leaver uh, right through to postgraduate, uh, sort of PhDs, master levels, uh, posts. Subjects which would be important to the LOX Agency would include geography, biology uh, and, and mathematics. Uh, English is also important because we have to communicate whether it's internally or externally uh, with our stakeholders. The LOX Agency covers a huge expanse of territory, over 4,000 square kilometres in two different jurisdictions. For some staff, the job's anything but plain sailing. A lot of our fishery officers uh, have boat duties and seagoing duties, so it could be uh, boat duties to do anti-protection patrols at sea out towards Malin Head or Carlingford Lock, uh, but also up the, the River Foyle as far as Straban and possibly on up the Castle Finn, uh, and indeed on any of the, the lakes or standing waters in the Foyle and Carlingford area. So a broad range of skills is essential, and the ability to enjoy the outdoor life and work in a variety of weathers is important. We also look for a, a, a wider range of skills than just the academic skills. Uh, we're looking for students that have got commitment and enthusiasm for, for a job. We are conservators and protectors of the uh, fisheries uh, biodiversity of the foil area and as such we want people that have a passion for that. So the broad range of skills, they could be uh, working in teams, uh, outdoor, a love of the outdoors, an ability to uh, work on board boats and to also work strange hours. Uh, so uh, a lot of our fishery officers who are uh, law enforcement officers uh, could start at any hour of the morning. So the ability to get out of bed is uh, pretty integral to uh, an, being an employee of the LOX Agency. The businesses and organisations featured in these films know how vitally important a skilled workforce is to the future success of their operations and of our economy. These employers need you. Our economy needs you, whether joining the payroll of an existing business or starting a company of your own. The choice is yours. After all, it's your future.